Chapter 1. Learn the Game, Like Earl Taught Tiger Putting is, by far, the most important part of the game. It may not be as fun as hitting a 300-yard drive down the fairway, but putting separates good from great players. If you watch the PGA Tour, you will see that week after week, it is usually the best putter who wins on Sunday. Putting is so important that Earl Woods, Tiger's father, taught him the game from the green backward to the tee. He prioritized putting more than any other part of the game. This is one of the many reasons Tiger Woods is one of the game's best putters ever. In his prime, Tiger was the most clutch putter the game has ever seen. Whether it was his putt on the 16th at the PGA Championship or the 2008 U.S. Open to win with a torn Achilles, there was never doubt Tiger was the guy to make the putt. While putting is important, it is often the least practice, as it can be monotonous and very detailed, when in reality it should be what you focus on most if you want to become a scratch golfer. Rolling the Rock There is no one way to be a great putter. Tiger Woods and Jack Nicklaus have very different styles, but are considered two of the greatest putters the game has ever seen. While there may not be a universal style, there are some techniques that will definitely help improve your putting. Find a putter you love. A lot of putting comes down to confidence more than your stroke. If you don't love your putter, you won't have the necessary confidence to be a scratch golfer. Period. I'm not saying you need to buy a $400 Scotty Cameron, but you do need to be confident when looking down at your putter. You want to think of it as your weapon for birdies. Choose a grip. As I mentioned, there is no one way to become a great putter, as most of the greats have all putted drastically different. Some have used a standard grip. Others, like Jordan Spieth, use a crosshand grip, while others use the claw. It doesn't matter what kind of grip you choose. Just make sure you practice the same way you play. Test a few different ways in practice to find out what you are most comfortable with and produce the most consistent results. Grip Pressure do you have a light, delicate grip, or do you have a death grip when it comes to putting? It's easy to overlook grip pressure in the full swing and putting. As Ben Crenshaw said, I gripped the putter so lightly it almost fell out of my hands. The lighter you hold it, the better you'll be able to feel the weight of the putter head at the other end of the shaft. If you think about grip pressure on a scale of 1 to 10, you want to be a 4 or 5. A 1 on the scale would be letting it go and a 10 would be the grim reaper holding the putter. You want to hold it firm enough that the club won't rotate, but soft enough you have a ton of feel on the greens. When you grip the putter lightly, you increase your feel around the greens and create a better tempo back and through the putt. Under pressure situations, you may find yourself more likely to grip it hard, but avoid temptation. A death grip will only increase tension in your forearms and not allow you to putt freely at your target. Eyes under the ball Old school methods always said to keep your eyes directly over the ball. These methods said that if you dropped a ball directly down from your eyes, it should hit your golf ball. I disagree, and so do experts, as the opinion has changed in the past decade. Instead, you should have your eyes slightly below the golf ball. You should never have your eyes directly over the golf ball. The ideal position is to have your eyes one to two inches below the golf ball and looking underneath the putt. This gives you the ability to see more of the break and give you the best chance to make more putts. Keep your head still. Although posture and grip will be different for everyone, all great putters have one thing in common. They keep their head still and down through the entire stroke. If your head drops down or you look up during your putt, you will miss to the right more times than not. Keeping your head down will also have a huge impact on both short and long putts. When you look up too soon, your head will move and will lead to sloppy contact and often a push miss to the right of the hole. If you move your head at all, it usually leads to poor contact on long putts and can leave very long, difficult second putts. A good drill is to putt with your left eye closed if you're right-handed to keep your eyes looking down without looking up. The Art of Putting Practice Most golfers don't practice their putting enough. 
It's just not as fun as ripping drivers at the range. But if you want to become a scratch golfer, you need to spend much more time on the putting green. Not only do you need to spend the time, you need to do it much more strategically than most amateur golfers. The majority of amateur golfers spend their time practicing putts that statistically they won't make very often. Once you are outside of four feet, your likelihood of making putts goes down significantly as you go farther back from the hole. Yet most amateur golfers drop some balls on the putting green from 15 to 20 feet and get in the habit of not seeing the ball go in the hole. This is the equivalent of a basketball player practice shooting from half court, a football kicker attempting a 65-yard field goal, or a baseball player missing 120-mile-per-hour fastballs. Seeing you not hit your target or goal will not help your confidence. So why do golfers practice where a majority of putts miss the hole? My guess is that it's ingrained in golfers at this point. The next time you get to the course, watch how many golfers drop two or three balls from 15 to 20 feet and just start putting at a hole, usually without reading the green. Statistically, golfers don't make many from this range, especially without reading the green or getting a feel for the speed. Don't practice or warm up like most golfers do. Instead, you should focus on making short putts over and over again. Make repetition a habit of your practice routine. This accomplishes two things. You will become automatic from short range, and you will see the ball consistently go in the hole. The shots that determine most tournaments and rounds are usually the putts from three to four feet. This is the distance you need to become automatic to get your handicap to zero. By practicing short putts often, you will also create a routine that is consistent under pressure. As a bonus, you will create a ton of confidence in your putting by consistently seeing the ball go in the hole. When it comes to short putts, I recommend keeping it simple. Here are the basics to being a great short-range putter. 1. Pick a spot. Never aim at the hole. Your mind needs the smallest target possible. Choose a dry spot on the cup or a specific blade of discolored grass just outside the cup. The smaller the target, the more focused you will be and more likely you are to drain the putt. 2. Accelerate through the putt. Too often amateur golfers take a big backstroke and decelerate through the putt. Instead, you should always be accelerating through the putt. Try to take the putter back 25% and go through 75%. This will ensure you don't decelerate, but still have a long enough follow-through. 3. Keep your head down and still. Every golfer wants to see the putt go in the hole. But if you look up too soon, you will miss right almost every time. Practice without looking up and only hearing it go in to form the habit of staying down through the putt. As important as short putts are, you still need to be confident from longer distances to avoid three putts, which are round killers. There is nothing worse than reaching a par five in two shots only to walk away with a three-putt par. It feels worse than a bogey, and unless mentally strong, can wear on your psyche. Use these tips and putting drills to make sure you walk away with a birdie or maybe even eagle. Practice your strokes looking at the hole. This will help you understand the right amount of speed needed to get the ball to the hole. Figure out the slope. Determine if you are putting uphill or downhill so your speed is correct when assessing your read. Study the final six feet. The last six feet of the putt is crucial when you are planning on dying it in the hole, as this portion determines if you will make or miss the putt more than the rest. Divide the green into pieces. Sometimes you will have a long putt that will go over or under a tier. Divide the break into two sections so you know what the putt will do on both parts of the green. I recommend spending an overwhelming majority of putting on short putts, but you still need to spend some time on long putts. Here are the best tips to practicing long putts. Putt to the fringe from 40 to 60 feet. Instead of putting at a hole, which statistically you're unlikely to make, putt to the fringe, a tee or small towel. Attempt to lag the putt to a specific spot on the collar of the fringe or another target to understand the speed of the greens and not focus on if you made it. 2. 
If you like to putt to the hole, I still recommend trying to make every single putt. After you use the fill drill for three factors, keep the circle of tees around the cup. Go back to 40, 50, and 60 feet with the 10 balls. Try to get three balls each inside the circle from 40, 50, and 60 feet. For your last ball, number 10, try to putt from the 50-foot mark and try to get it inside the circle as well. Putting drills the pros use. Fill drill. The fill drill is one of the best drills to become automatic from short range. Use your sand wedge to place 10 tees in a circular fashion around the hole. Place a golf ball at each tee to surround the hole dividing them equally. Before you start this drill, establish the number of putts you want to make in a row. Phil's, for example, is 100 putts without missing. If he misses even one, he will start the drill over. Even for a scratch golfer, 100 putts in a row is very difficult. Instead, make it more realistic and start with trying to make 15 or 20 in a row. As you become better at this drill, keep increasing your number to see how many putts you can make without missing. Eyes closed. Putting with your eyes closed is a great way to improve your feel on the greens, especially if it is a new course. After each putt, try to guess how far the ball rolled and where it will be in relation to the hole. Get in the gate. Tiger Woods has another putting drill that he practices constantly, both in his practice and pre-round routine. It's known as the gate drill. From three to four feet, place two tees just outside the edges of your putter. Then practice making three to four footers without hitting the tees. This will help you build a consistent putting stroke and also help your confidence for the most important putts during a round. Three and four footers will be your most common distance that you will have after long putts and chips to save par. Golf Tutor Most training aids are total BS, but this is one that I have used consistently and helped me become a much better putter. This putting device was designed by one of the greatest short game instructors in the world, Dave Pels. Phil Mickelson is a huge supporter of this training aid and has been spotted using it during tournaments and major championships. The golf tutor makes sure you are getting the ball started on the correct line and not pulling or pushing it. Use the device to practice six to eight footers that have a significant amount of break. I like to practice left to right and right to left putts to get the feel of the breaks before the round. This device will get you in the habit of getting the ball started out far enough on slippery putts. After you have used it a few times, make sure to practice without and get the feeling of starting the ball on the correct line.